welcome to another module in this massive open online course. Uh, so, in this module let us start looking at the various properties of convex functions or the operations on convex functions that preserve convexity. Okay, so, what we want to look at are properties or you can also say operations that preserve convexity, we want to look at the operations operations that preserve convexity. Now, f equals convex, if f is convex, okay. so consider a function, first one is simple, f is convex, uh, then this implies alpha times f of x bar, if that is provided alpha is greater than or equal to 0 is also convex, correct. Uh, and this is very simple, if you have what this says is that you have a convex function and you are scaling it by a factor alpha, right. So, this is f, this is alpha times f. So, naturally once you scale a convex function, a convex function, I mean it is important that you scale it by a non-negative number, all right. So, once you scale it by a non-negative number, a convex function remains a convex function. And same for translation, in fact, alpha f plus any constant is also a convex function, correct. So, if you have alpha times f of x bar plus c, this is also a convex function. So, you can scale and translate a function, it remains a convex function. Also simple to see that if you have several functions f i of x bar, these are all, these are all convex. Uh, uh, for one, for i equals let us say then there is sum is convex. So, if you take large number, so if you take functions, several functions which are each, each of which is convex, for instance here we are considering n functions f 1, f 2, f n each of which is convex, take their sum that is also a convex function. In fact, this extends, the interesting thing about this is this extends even to infinite sum and more importantly integrals, all right. And we will see an application of this later, all right. So, this extends to an infinite sum, we will try to see applications of this later. We can say also valid for, also valid for infinite sums. also valid for infinite sums plus also integral which is nothing but a continuous sum. Then with affine function similar to convex sets, correct. The composition composition with affine functions, f is convex, okay. 
uh, which implies the composition f a x bar plus b bar correct. Remember this is an affine function. Okay, so, f is convex its composition with an affine that is f of a of x bar a x bar plus b bar is also convex that is remember a composition of a function implies f of g of x bar that is f composition with g. Here you are taking the composition of f with an affine function a x bar plus b bar what this is is the composition of a convex function with an affine function is also convex. Okay. For instance, a simple example you have norm x bar we have seen that this is convex for instance, if we consider the two norm this implies norm of a x bar plus b bar this is also convex. Okay. All right. Another interesting property the point wise maximum or you can simply call this as the maximum this has a lot of interesting applications. If you take functions f 1, f 2, f of m which are all convex. This implies the maximum of these that is f 1, f 2 each point wise. Okay. So, this is also you can think of this as the point wise point wise maximum for instance you have two functions convex. So, this you can see this is convex correct this is convex. Now, if you take the maximum of these two, you can see the maximum is this, which you can see is also a convex function. So, the maximum of two, in fact, several convex functions, this is the maximum, which is also you can see. This is also convex. For instance, you can take the maximum of a piecewise of a set of piecewise of a set of linear functions that is maximum of i or 1 less than equal to i less than equal to m a yeah, bar transpose plus b i and uh, this is known as a piecewise linear function correct. So, if you take the maximum of several linear functions this is what you get is a what you get is a piecewise linear function. For instance, you have here you take several linear functions and you take the maximum you can see you get something like this. Okay. So, this is basically first you have this is convex further this is also a piecewise this is a piecewise linear function. Okay. So, you take several linear functions 
right, which are basically hyperplanes, you take their maximum, correct, what you get is a piecewise linear function, which is also convex and that follows from the property that we have just seen, okay. Let us now look at another concept that is the composition. Let us look at a simple case of scalar functions. Let us look at the composition with scalar functions. That is, let us say we have a function f of x equals h of g of x, that is a composition of h with that is a composition of h with g, okay. So, composition of h and g. Now, this is convex. So, f of x is convex if g is convex plus h is convex and non decreasing, that is basically either increasing or at least non decreasing okay that is if so we are looking at h of g of x if a g of x is g is constant and h is both if g is convex and h is both convex and non decreasing then f x f of x is convex or if g is concave, if g is concave and if g is concave and h is con h is convex and non increasing non increasing that is it's a decreasing function or at least should not increase that it's a non increasing function Okay, we have this following rule for composition and that is fairly simple to see. We are going to use the derivative test to demonstrate this assuming the functions are differentiable, all right. Uh, what we can show is that you have f of x equals h of x equals h of g of x. So, if you take the first order derivative, the first derivative, you can write it as f prime of x represented by f prime of x. This is h prime of g of x, use the chain rule times g prime of x. Further, you have f double prime of x second prime of second derivative of f f of x or the derivative of f prime of x you use the product rule so it's h prime second derivative of 
g of x into derivative of g of x into derivative of g of x. So, this is g prime of x square plus well h prime of g of x into derivative of g of x which is g prime of x. Okay. Now, there are four components. Now, first you can see that g prime of x this is always greater than or equal to 0. Now, h prime of now since h is convex this implies h prime of h double prime of x is greater than or equal to 0. Remember the second order derivative test is convex. So, the second derivative second order derivative is greater than or equal to 0. Now, this is interesting. Now, this is non decreasing correct implies the first order this implies h prime of x or h prime of g of x is greater than or equal to 0 and the last condition we have is g of x is convex implies the second order derivative of g of x is greater than or equal to 0. So, this implies also you can see all quantities are positive. implies second order derivative greater than or equal to 0, this implies that f of x equals convex. So, this implies you can see if g of x is convex, h is convex and non decreasing correct. You can see that the composition h of g of x is convex. Okay. Now, similarly you can show it easily for the other condition that is start with again f double prime of let us write that the second derivative is uh, second derivative of h of x g prime of x square plus h prime of g of x to g prime of x. Now, you can see this quantity g prime x square is always greater than or equal to 0. h of x is convex in the second condition also if you look at that uh, h of x is convex. So, this is greater than or equal to 0 convex. implies uh, h that is the second derivative greater than or equal to 0. Now, coming to this g prime g is concave this implies g second order derivative g double prime is less than or equal to 0 h is non increasing implies h prime g of x is less than or equal to 0. Now, together g prime x less than g double prime x less than or equal to 0, h prime of g of, g of x is less than or equal to 0. So, this implies since both of these are less than or equal to 0, this implies h prime g of x into g double prime x greater than or equal to 0. So, now both the quantities in the sum are positive. So, h double prime x into g prime x square is non negative and h prime of g of x into g double prime that is second order derivative of g of x the product is greater than or equal to 0 their sum is greater than or equal to 0 implies f the second order derivative of x is greater than or equal to 0 
which implies f of x is convex. implies f of x is convex all right so we have seen these two conditions all right these are the two conditions uh, to demonstrate uh, that is uh, these are the two conditions that ensure that the composition f of x that is obtained by the composition of h of g of x is also convex and let us look at a simple example we can look at a simple example to understand this for instance uh, example you take e raised to x square now this is equal to h of g of x g of x equals x square h of x equals e raised to x uh, now you can see g of x x square this is convex and if you look at h of x, h of x equals convex and in fact it is increasing. So, g of x is convex, h of x is convex non decreasing which implies f of x which is h of g of x is convex and you can just check that if you take f prime of x you get 2 x e power x square f double prime of x is 2 e power x square plus 4 x square is greater than or equal to 0 implies that f of x equals convex f of x is a convex. Similarly, one can do re de uh, derive results for the concavity of f, that is when is f of x concave given that it is a composition of h of x with g x. one can derive the corresponding conditions for concavity. Okay. Similarly, one can derive Similarly, one can derive conditions for the concavity of f of x that is the composition of h of g, h and g h of g of x. Right. So, we will stop. So, we looked at several properties of convex functions, we will stop here and continue in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much.